Well, welcome back to the live desk. Now, according to the latest figures from the Israeli Defense Force, there are believed to be 199 hostages trapped in Gaza, kidnapped by Hamas. Families, friends and loved ones are anxiously awaiting news and updates as the fate of the hostages remains uncertain. Joining us now is Shaked Haran, who has 11, 11 family members who have been kidnapped by Hamas. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us this afternoon, Shaked. We, we cannot imagine the torture that you are going through. Could you give us a little bit of information about um, who your family members are and if you've heard any information about their whereabouts? Uh, so, uh, first, thank you for having me. Uh, we haven't heard any new information except what I can tell you now. So, the family members are my father, um, 65, 66 years old. My mother, she's 67. Uh, my sister and her husband, they are 38. And there are two children. My niece, she's three years old. Um, and my um and my nephew is eight years old. My aunt, my father's sister, she's 55, and her daughter, she's 12. And another uncle who's um, 65, and his wife, my aunt, is 60. Um, and all of them, well, eight of them were together in the shelter of my parents' house on Saturday morning. My aunt and uncle were in a nearby house inside the shelter. Uh, we had some communication with them during Saturday morning and there was very intense bombing. So I was in the shelter in, in my house and um, my brother was texting them. In the beginning, they said that they're in the shelter and they're keeping safe and they're doing uh, what they were being told to do. And then uh, at some point they said that uh, they're in big trouble and that they love us. And that was the last message. Uh, we heard from them, um, and then we we had no idea what's going on. The, the, I'm sure you've seen the videos, but the kibbutz was like a horror film. Yeah, uh, it was really really crazy, and we were we weren't inside the kibbutz, fortunately, but we 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 saw the messages, and we had no idea where my family is. During Saturday, a friend of my father called his cell phone over a hundred times. Eventually, it was answered by uh, someone in Arabic who shouted um, shouted in Arabic and then in Hebrew said, um, hostage, hostage, Gaza, Gilad Shalit, uh, and hung up. So that was the only piece of information we had for a while. Um, after, after this, um, around Sunday, someone was sent to the house and they found my parents' house, but also almost all their neighborhood completely burned down. The houses were shattered and um, they did not find any bodies. Uh, they, the, the assumption is that uh, Hamas used uh, the, the fire, started the fire in the house to get them out of the shelter so they would have no other option. Um, and then took them under gunpoint, um, abducted them to to Gaza, and this is including my three-year-old niece, my... Oh, she cared. Yes, yeah. it, it must be incredibly difficult for you to try to, uh, to think about um, uh, what uh, has happened uh, with a family which one assumes is, is still together, one hopes is still together to support uh, them. But have you had any information from the, the IDF about their location or their possible location in Gaza. I mean, they've now specifically said 199, so they may have some intelligence. Nothing has been told to us. We don't know anything except except the information we collected. Uh, regard, it was in the first uh, first or second day of, of this operation, so we collected the information about the location of their cell phones, and we. Yeah. Um, we recognized my sister's husband in one of the Hamas videos being put inside a Hamas truck, uh, handcuffed. But except for that information, we don't have anything. We have no clue if they are held together, if if the children are with the, the parents. We don't know anything, anything. And Shaked, is it, now. 
sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to ask you, is it just luck that you were not there as well? So, yeah, I mean, my sister doesn't live in the kibbutz. She came to my parents for the holidays and me and my family were there just a week before. Also in the, it was another holiday. My brother, which is with me right now, he lives in the kibbutz and he went with his girlfriend, with his, with his partner to, to the desert for, for something. And so, yeah, every, it's a, yeah. And in terms of communication, are, are you receiving regular updates, even if it's, you know, there's no real change? Are the channels of communication um, good well, there is There is channels of communication, but no one is saying anything new. And we have no idea if someone knows anything new. We um, are trying to contact also foreign uh embassies and some of my family members had other citizenships so we're trying also that channel to maybe get some information maybe from the red cross but nothing we really are completely in lack of any knowledge and it's been already eight days to this yeah. i mean it's, it's just horrific every every night i put my children to sleep and i think about m my niece she's the age of my son and they are best friends and Every time that I put him to sleep, I keep thinking where she is. I have no idea. And I feel like every night that passes is another failure that we can, that we haven't done enough to bring them back. And Shakat, are you and other families who have people who've been taken over the border able to support each other? Are you in contact with other families to, to share your, your experiences? We are in contact, but I feel that we're not there. We're still, we still try to put all our efforts into doing things that may be able to, to bring them back. Yeah. I feel that, that we, I feel that really the international community has a very big role here and that can actually put pressure to bring the hostages back. I feel it's not only, of course, I want it for my family, but I think it's good for the whole region because until this is done, everything will just get more and more out of control. Uh, we are really, really hoping that some humanitarian act will, will at least get the children and the women out of there, yeah. whoever is still there, because we think this is really, really crucial. So we're not yet in the stage of just hugging one another and comforting each other. We, yes. we want to act, we want action to be, to be taken. And um, we really hope to to get help from from Britain, from Germany, from Switzerland. We we think these that these countries have much more power in this situation regarding the hostages than uh, Israel does right now with the war going on with Hamas. Yeah, and and the international pressure that can be brought to bear. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, on GB News. We appreciate how difficult it is for you to, to talk about these things. But as you say, important to get the message out there and that they are remembered and uh, that uh, the situation is addressed, of course. Thank you very much indeed for your time. We'll, we'll stay in contact with you. Just the last thing I want to say that my family is only one story. Out yeah, yeah. Of all the, the hostages, which are mostly women and uh, children and elderly people. So it's also important to know that. Absolutely. We, we are thinking of you all. Thank you so much for talking to us.